All right, MA3 version 1.6 is out. Yay, very exciting whenever a new update comes out because you're like, yay, things are going to be fixed and more things are going to break because that's just how updates work. All right, so let's take a look at some of the new things that MA3 version uh, 1.6 has introduced. My, the first one, which I'm really excited about, is the clean up command. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to do this. I've created, I've just stored a quick dimmer preset. Uh, as a universal preset. We're going to talk about those in a second. Um, but now let's say you have a ton of stuff in your show file, right? Um, and everything takes up space. Every sequence you store, everything that you, every preset you store, and maybe you just want to get rid of everything that you are not using, right? Um, maybe you've like finished your show and you know, oh, I'm not going to need any of these presets that I created, but I never ended up using. So you decide that you want to delete all of them, but you don't, you can't exactly remember which ones you're actually using in your show file. Well, MA has you covered. So there is the new clean up command. So I've just typed clean up into the command line here. What this does is it will go through and it will um, essentially delete everything that is not referenced by something in the show file. So this could be sequences, um, this could be presets, whatever you want. So here I'm going to go uh, clean up preset. 1.6 and I'm using the example 1.6 because I created this here this preset that's not being used um, if you wanted to like say all presets in uh, in your preset pool 1 you could say 1.1 through and this would essentially go through all of your dimmer presets and it would um, like erase whichever ones are not actually being used but let's just hit enter here it's going to say cleanup would delete one object I'm going to hit confirm and you can see it has now deleted that in my pool here because that is not referenced in any queues it is not created anywhere so that's kind of cool so speaking of presets a couple big changes in the way that presets are handled first off over here you can see you can quickly tell the default uh, pool type in every type of preset pool. You can tell that this is a universal pool just by looking at the U here. Uh, if we went to position, you can see the position is a selective pool. And if we went to color, you can see that it is a global pool. You can change this by just tapping on it and then you can set your default preset mode um, if you wanted all of your color presets to be uh, universal or whatever. So that's quite handy. Um, there have been a couple things a lot that have changed in presets, how they um, can be stored, uh, where data for presets is actually stored, and I'll make a video um, about those because that's a little more in detail and stuff. So please subscribe and uh, you'll know, get notified when that comes out. Also in presets, something that's really helpful, is now you can change your fixture type. So if you are, um, like let's say you're running a festival show and you're doing like a festival tour and you know that every venue is going to have some sort of profile fixture, but you don't, it's going to change per venue. Um, well, never fear, you can now in your patch, let's say you find out that all of these mythos here are actually um, like Sharpies or something, maybe they didn't have mythos at one venue, you can actually change those, uh, you know, just by finding it in here. Um, and then you can, uh, you can put those in, you might have to readjust your patch a little bit, but it can help you with that. And then when you close everything out, these presets that you stored will still work for them. You might have to update a couple of your position ones, um, but colors, dimmers, you might have to like update gobos or gobo rotation or something. Uh, but for the most part, everything will merge over, which is a really, really helpful tool. Another thing uh, that was introduced, which I'm not as crazy about, I won't lie, um, is the marker. So if you go into the MA3 fixture type here and you type in marker, you can see this here. So essentially a marker is a way of grouping objects together. These can be fixtures, these can be other geometry, um, like curtains, like uh, staging, truss, you get the idea. Um, so markers are treated as fixtures. The reason I'm not crazy about this is it does actually take out parameters. Um, so that means if you have tons of markers in your fixture, I mean in your show file, you're going to be using up parameters. And if you're on a limited parameter you know, thing, eventually you can eat it. Um, but essentially, I'll create one here. What you can do is you can put objects under a marker. I'll quickly show you how to do that here. Let's say I'm, if I'm going to take these mythos here, I'm going to cut them from my patch. I'm going to go up to my marker over here and I'm going to paste them. And now these mythos are under this marker. So when I go back into my, um, say, save and exit here, I can go 
2001 and all of a sudden I have this full um, like control over all of those um, fixtures that we just put under the marker just by doing that and that's really really helpful you can see that can save you a lot of time um, when you are uh, like working with big rigs you can also put truss elements in there so like I don't have any trust in my show file but if I had truss um, I could put put that in and then I could paste that um, into my marker as well and then you can also under the truss you can use the tree structure to add fixtures onto each individual piece of truss um, and that way you can easily move everything up and down maybe you find out that actually uh, in reality like your rig is two feet higher um, than it was in all the plans or something then you can quickly adjust that in 3d just by going and adjusting the marker uh, in 3d edit mode so we will leave here for now the last thing that I wanted to quickly mention um, is a new thing. It's this little icon over here. This is for on PC users. You're going to notice if I tap it here, uh, my command bar section down here has changed. I can now see my sequences. I can see uh, the master section here. I have a grandmaster and I have um, my uh, encoder and programmer. This is really helpful because if you're if you only have one screen and you're working on PC, right? Maybe you don't have multiple touch screens. You only have one. Um, this allows you to see everything in one. It's a little bit tighter, um, but it will work. Um, very very helpful. You can also actually see if we go over here in the more tab, you can see it under here as well. Um, and then you can also kind of like change it up if you don't want to see like your master or your master selection. Uh, you can kind of change those up and you can change like the page that those are shown on. Um, so that's really, really helpful. There are lots of other things that have changed uh, in MA3 version 1.6. These are the major ones. I'm going to do some more detailed videos on uh, each individual thing. Um, I, there are still a couple that I didn't get to mention. Um, some things have like changed in how Stomp works, a couple time code things, uh, lots of bugs have been fixed. So we'll do videos on a lot of those. So, so, so subscribe, like, share this video. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you guys later.